liked by commercial drivers and grandparents everywhere, the Toyota Camry SL Hybrid has long been a favourite for those wanting practicality and reliability. And this model upholds that tradition, but it's certainly more stylish than the old Camry my dad used to have, and I'm happy to say that the gold paintwork is no longer in fashion. We're in the era of the SUV, so sedans like this are few and far between, but this still has some solid competition from the likes of the Skoda Octavia and the Honda Accord. So what's this like to drive for a modern day family of three? Stay watching to find out. There are four models in the Camry lineup and the SL sits at the top. This will cost you just over $50,000 before on-road costs which makes it a fair bit more affordable than the equivalent versions of its rivals. Being a top model, it is well specified and it comes with heated and ventilated front seats, a panoramic sunroof, as well as leather accented trims. The full specs are in my written review at carsguide.com.au if you want more info. One of the things that a lot of people forget about with sedans is just how spacious they can be and both rows are downright roomy, even for taller passengers, which is very practical when you have kids in tow and all of their gear. The front seats are very comfortable and both are electric with adjustable lumbar support. You should be comfortable on a long trip in this. The leather accented trims look nice but feel a little bit too synthetic for my purest heart, but they should clean well. Individual storage up front is really good with an extra deep middle console and glove box plus the usual drink holders and a really cool utility tray. You can pop your phone on top of it but underneath is quite deep for all the little small bits and bobs. The 9 inch touchscreen multimedia system is simple enough to use but is starting to look a bit old compared to its rivals. Still it has wide Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well as built in sat nav which is always a plus. The seven inch digital instrument panel is very easy to read and I've really enjoyed having the colored head up display this week. The charging options throughout are okay, but not awesome. You get a single USB-A port up front plus a 12 volt port and then you get two USB-C ports in the back, but there's no USB-C port up front or a wireless charging pad. The back seat is well cushioned and there's lots of under thigh support. You should be pretty comfortable in this on a long road trip. Individual storage is about average with map pockets, drink bottle holders in the doors and cup holders in the fold down armrest. The amenities back here are a little bit bare for a top model though. And there's no additional lux factors which should add comfort to older kids or adults like heated seats or climate control. There are Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seats plus three top tethers. Two seats will fit best and there's plenty of room for front passengers when a zero to four rearward facing child seat is installed too. However, because of the lower profile height of the car, you might not want to be buckling in an infant all that often. The boot is quite large at 524 litres, but like most sedans, the aperture is wide but narrow, so you might find it a little bit of a struggle to fit bulkier items in here. You have a temporary spare wheel underneath the floor, and while you don't get a powered tailgate, you don't really miss it because of how light this is to open and close. This model has a 2.5 litre four cylinder petrol hybrid powertrain with a maximum power output of 160 kilowatts. While Toyota doesn't quote the combined torque figure, I was actually very surprised by the power in this. It's got a serious amount of grunt when you need it. This is a front wheel drive and has a continuously variable transmission, but it is delightfully smooth. This has got to be one of the smoothest cars I've driven. It's got your back when it comes to ride comfort. And I feel like the suspension is well tuned for Aussie roads, but it doesn't feel springy. It will hug the corners if you take bends, which is great. Again, the power is very good in this. You're not going to have any issues getting up to speed or overtaking. I also found it to be very responsive when you have to accelerate from a full stop, which isn't always the case for CVTs. The cabin is pretty much whisper quiet until you get up to higher speeds where there's a tiny, tiny bit of wind noise. But otherwise, sounds are all but mute. I feel like you have great visibility in this as well. The windows are wide and it feels like the car is a lot larger than what it is. I feel well protected. I think that's mainly because I can see so much of the bonnet from my driving position. 
I really enjoyed parking this. It is big and will fill up a space, but with the 360 degree view camera and the front and rear parking sensors, it's actually pretty easy to park. The camera is a bit lower quality than what I would want, and I think this needs to be improved upon, but it certainly serves its purpose. So it drives really well, but what about the hybrid efficiency? Well, the official combined fuel cycle is 4.7 litres per 100 kilometres, and I achieved a real world usage of 5.5 litres, which I thought was great for this size sedan. Based off the official combined fuel cycle and the 50 litre fuel tank, you should be able to achieve a driving range of around 1,064 kilometres, which is great for people who want to do road trips or family holidays. The safety list on the Camry is extensive and I really like the automatic collision notification system. So say an airbag is deployed or the car registers a serious impact, it will alert Toyota's emergency call center and if you need help or if you don't respond, they will then alert emergency services to your situation and your location. The Camry was awarded a maximum five star ANCAP safety rating, but it was done ages ago in 2017. It does have seven airbags, but it's missing the front center airbag that we're starting to see on new cars now. This car gets a lot of road alerts for entering school zones, exiting school zones, and speed camera warnings. I found them to be very intrusive and interrupted conversations regularly, so I turned it off. Now my dad has this feature on his Prado and he actually really likes it, but I wasn't a fan at all. The full specs are in my written review at carsguide.com.au if you want more info. The ongoing costs on this are great. It comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, but you can bump it up to 10 years warranty on the hybrid battery if you get it serviced at a Toyota dealership. It comes with a five year cap price servicing plan and services are a flat $255 per service or over the five years, a total of $1,275. Servicing intervals are very reasonable at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. The Toyota Camry SL Hybrid offers good practicality for families and has a handsome roadside presence. It's well specified, but the tech is starting to get outshone by some of its rivals now. Having said that, I love its price tag and the ongoing costs, because in this day and age, it's always good to save a little bit of money but I think the driving is the highlight for me. It's not a performance vehicle, but it's definitely up there with the best I've driven so far. So this easily earns an eight and a half out of 10 from us. If you're after more details, check out the full review at carsguide.com.au and I'll see you next week.